Welcome to the Best Business Podcast, the podcast for established marketers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs. The ones who want to join me in my mission to create 200 new multimillionaires who solve world problems with entrepreneurship. If that's you, then this podcast was created to give you access to the tools, training, strategies, and tactics you need to achieve multiple seven-figure profits as soon as possible. This world needs the best business you can build. So please get ready, open your mind, believe you can do this, and let's build a better world together for future generations. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always, and today we are joined by a very special guest, Jeff Roning. Jeff is co-founder of StealthSeminar.com, founder of WebinarProsperityBlueprint.com, and FreeWebinarSchool.com. Between these businesses, he has observed over 7 million webinars collecting data and information no one else has. As a result, he is passionate about helping people use webinars to grow their businesses faster and more dramatically than has been possible at any other time in the history of the world. Jeff also recently achieved one of his lifetime goals. He was on a Showtime Championship boxing card, and when I asked him about it, he said, life is good, but I still look forward to the day I can spar with my wife and not get hurt. <laughs> so Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always an honor and a pleasure when we talk. How are you doing, my friend? I am doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Excellent. Excellent. Well, yeah, so thank you again for joining us. Now, for some of these people that are my listeners, they may or not have heard, we did an interview a while back where you interviewed me based on some of the results that I got using Stealth Seminar, your tool, where I helped a client do multiple millions of dollars. And I just want to put that out there in front just because I think there's a lot of power in what we're going to be talking today. There's a lot of leverage, and it's it's a really, really, really important topic. And so I just wanted to preface this with that because you're not coming here as just anybody. Like you've got a ton of real world, world experience, not only working with myself, but with a lot of other big name thought leaders and business owners to help them grow and scale their business income. And that's a really important topic. So now before we get into any of the nuts and bolts in that, you weren't always kind of a webinar star. So how did you even get started in business? Like, do you come from a family of entrepreneurs or... No, I don't actually. I come from a, I come from a from a wonderful family, but you know it's more of a blue collar family. Mm -hmm. And I got started in webinars because I was running my own business previously, mm -hmm. and I wanted to. I've always loved automation in business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always I've always seen it as really you know one of the mandatory things that everybody should be using. Right. For this other business, well, you know, I want to automate these webinars because I've been given these webinars week after week after week and you know, I wanted to slam my head through a wall. Right. So, I went to find the service that would automate my webinars and there weren't any and I was really shocked. I couldn't believe it. So, that sent me on the journey of really creating Stealth Seminar. Mm. Now, at that time it didn't have the name Stealth Seminar because it was only for me. So, you know, it was a multiple year journey trying to find people that could do this and eventually I did and then other marketers started to notice what I was doing and asked me if they could could use my system mm. and luckily my wife told me you know you should really like to use your system and you should take their money being that she's the brains in the family you know that was a good idea so so that's how <laughs> Stealth Seminar started that's how Stealth Seminar started so what, you know I come from a performance you... background so performance uh, background how you know, I it's a unique entertainment, you know, kind of a small niche. Mm -hmm. I was a, a very successful stage hypnotist for multiple decades. Mm. As a stage hypnotist, you know, there's a lot that you learn about entertainment, about performance, about mm -hmm. psychology. And so all those things directly, you know, transfer to webinars. Not only was I a performer, but I was also, you know, a coach or a and mentor to stage hypnotists around the world. So you were a hypnotist? I never knew yep. that. Like one of those guys that you'd see, like if you go with your friends out and they make you like hump a dog or something and you're really <laughs> in a chair and your friends are like, Is that real? Is that the sort of stuff? Really? Well, I wouldn't make people hump a dog, but you know, yeah, yeah, that sort of stuff. That is hilarious. I almost kissed a dude. I almost kissed a dude. Uh, anyways, that was hilarious. Uh, For anyone listening, that's like such a great night out. It really is. It's I've done like two or three. Anyways, I've only been on stage once, but that's so crazy, Jeff. I would have never even guessed that you. That's your background. That's so. 
That is so crazy. Anyway, sorry, I'm going off topic. That's right. okay. Yeah, so, it is crazy. And so you, you know, use, use webinars to to get like to get your coaching clients. I guess was that how you got in? Like, what were, is that's what you were using webinars for to begin with? Exactly. Yep. Got yep. it. Okay. Okay. So got it. And then you build this tool, and then you get the idea to sell the tool, and things just blow up. That is incredible. I guess one of the things I want to ask is, I guess, when you were said you were first kind of doing the webinars and banging your head against the wall, why were you banging your head against the wall? What were some of the frustrations that you were going through? Um, it was the manual labor, you know. I hate, I hate manual labor. I mean, it's not that I hate doing the work, but I hate doing the work again and again and again and again. It's like, right. so if you're delivering the same webinar once a week or whatever it is, I mean, that to me is just, you know, you might as well be digging holes and filling them back up. It was that, it was the repetitiveness of that. And that was, you know, the nice thing is, you know, if you're in a live performance setting, sure, you're doing more or less the same show, but you have an audience there, you have the audience's energy, and you do have a lot of spontaneous moments. Right. When you're given a webinar, you know, a webinar is different, or it should be different, because you want to be doing the presentation that is the most, you know, the most valuable, the most highest converting. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, you you really don't want any spontaneity, because that will do nothing but probably reduce your conversions. Mm. So that's what was driving me crazy, is mm. giving the same presentation again and again and again, knowing that, you know, I could give this presentation a heck of a lot more times, and it could be even better because it wouldn't involve me or the way I feel or what's going on in my day today, if I could automate it and just have it run for me. Right, right. Which, you know, for some people, it might be a strange concept. And I think some people, at least even with myself, there's a bit of a hesitation because it's, I don't know, it's like people feel they have to bleed to, you know, like to earn stuff. And I mean, you do want to earn what you get. If you just got like a purple heart, you know, and you started wearing that around town, you know, the medal that they give soldiers who have done something commendable. I mean, you know, you would feel like a fraud. And I think that's the, at some point you need to earn it. But at the same time, some people get it in their head that it has to be hard and they have to suffer and it has to be difficult when there's some really easy tools out there that they can use. And for people that are listening to this, I'm a huge proponent for webinars and any sort of automated sales tool because in so many companies, one of the most difficult things to do is scale sales. And part of that is because you have to hire new sales reps and they're going to do it their own way or they have to learn how to sell to begin with. And then you got to send them out in the field and they're unsupervised or unmonitored and everyone's kind of, you know, having different interactions and they're feeling good today and all oh, their wife's on their case tomorrow. And so they're not really on their game and all this stuff. But if you can just capture yourself at peak performance in a, you know, in a webinar and your best presentation, and you can record that and put everyone through that. I mean, that's, that's how I was able to help a client do millions of dollars was we did that. And so that's just, I know maybe I should be getting you to say this, but I'm just a huge, huge fan. I just really want to get the people that are listening to understand, like you mentioned about automation, how important that is. And especially anytime that there's a sales process, if you can maintain a personal interaction with people, but try to control the quality of the experience for them. I mean, that's huge, right? That's so huge. So absolutely. I mean, and you know, you bring up a really, I find it super interesting point because it's so true. It's, you know, a lot of people feel like they have to bleed in order to accept that money. And, you know, obviously that's not the case. You just right. to bring people value. Once people can understand that and get to that point, I think it does amazing things for their business. I mean, it really, it allows it to scale because if they have to bleed every time to make the money, well, they're very limited. Yeah. So I guess when you were getting started in this, then what were some of the, are, like, because now you've seen so many webinars and I mean big launches, you know, huge, huge dollars, huge volumes of sales. Having gone from in the beginning to where you are now, do you feel there are certain milestones where you figured things out about using webinars and automating and even working with the clients? Like, were there kind of milestones or major challenges that you learned to overcome? And, and helping people with their webinars? I'm sure there were. I've never really thought of them in terms of that. I think the thing that has, when I think about the delivery of webinars and the success and failure, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the things that are traditionally taught or traditionally done are, ironically enough, you know, the, the, pretty much the exact opposite of what you want to do. Can you give me an example? 
Sure, sure. You know, for the last several years, most people said, you know, get on a webinar and tell them what to do but not how to do it. And, you know, essentially we're just very, very sales-oriented versus providing value for people mm. and teaching them real, actual, honest, actionable, you know, concepts, skills, tools, mm -hmm. strategies that they could use. Now, that's starting to change a little bit, but it's been years, you know, mm. and the most people have been going through and really trying to succeed with, with like pitches that you might find at a timeshare presentation right. or something. Right. <laughs> and, you know, at the timeshare presentation, they can lock you in the room and not take you back. Right. But on a webinar, people can just be gone in one click. Right. Right, right, right. So is that like a, the wrong intent or the wrong mindset people approach doing a webinar with? Or I'm looking for some guidance, I guess, for the audience that's listening that are like, we've just from what we said, they're like, they got their pens out. They're like, I need to master this. Because you're right. There's a lot of people that say that, you know, tell them what and then sell them how. Yeah. But you're saying just give them all the how and then just offer them more assistance, more whatever that is, like the next step. Now that you got that taken care of, you might need this. Yeah, well, there's always a next um, step or there's always a more um, because, you know, most webinars are going to be of a limited time nature. So if you can solve for them in that short period of time on that webinar some of their top challenges, then whatever you offer that has, you know, that has some association with those challenges, you know, so it doesn't have to necessarily be the next step. It could just be more of what you just told them, more right. of what you just shared. So what I find to be the most valuable is, you know, consider your market, consider, consider the prospects you want to go after, consider your business and determine what are the top three challenges that the people, that those particular people have that you could solve on a webinar. Now, again, you're limited on a webinar, so you can't, you're never going to be able to teach everything you know, uh -huh. but what you should do is teach things that are going to be incredibly valuable for your attendees. You know, one of the things about a webinar, too, a lot of people think of a webinar as an event. It's like, okay, you know, I'm going to put this on, and that's the end of it. But the truth of the matter is, is the webinar is not only a really, you know, probably the highest, most profitable converting sales tool right now, mm. but it's also incredibly important to your future because it allows you to develop rapport. It allows you to build trust with people. It allows you to create this relationship that in their head is extremely personal yep. because they, if they're on an automated webinar, you know, they feel like you've spent your time helping them. Now you have, you just haven't done it live, live that particular time. Right. And they may or may not be aware so, of that. Yeah. So, you know, when you think in terms of that, you realize, okay, so obviously we want the most sales on the webinar, yep. but we don't want the most sales on the webinar at the cost of the future of our business. You know, most people right now are so, most people delivering webinars are still delivering very hard sale oriented ones. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they are starting to, you know, to soften those. But so when you go out there with a webinar that is just truly valuable, you know, it really, it allows you to make a connection with people. It allows you to, yep. you know, to take that relationship and, and continue it on. It drives them, it forces them to attend future webinars mm -hmm. that you offer them. And they get addicted to your content. They get addicted to you. They, they start to trust you as helping them. I think this is so timely. Just last night I got, I was fortunate enough to meet Aaron Ross. He was the author of what's been the sales Bible of Silicon Valley, a book called Predictable Revenue. And he's a huge fan of outbound marketing. He's a huge advocate for outbound marketing and having like, you know, sales reps and sales teams. And he's got a new book that he's launching. But what I loved is because his one of the most powerful quotes of his whole talk that stood out to me was he said, in order to grow, you must learn how to market and sell yourself to people who you don't who don't know you. And that was really important because that's exactly where I see a lot of people failing, in my experience at least, is they start a business or they've got a company or whatever, and maybe they've got some JV partners. But it's like once they f like tap out their personal network, they just sputter and, f and flounder, and they don't know how to meet new people and build those relationships and actually sell someone who doesn't know your track record. You know, like, I mean, someone who's listening to this, they know that what you've done and what I've done. But if I try to sell someone something that doesn't know that background, you know, like they don't. 
the, how do I get there? How do I build that rapport? And so I think what you're talking about is really important. I mean, this is a way that you can have a presentation, whether it's a sales presentation or an educational presentation or whatever, and you can record, have, do it once. And just like a TV show, when you watch a rerun, you know, like they filmed that show years ago in some instances, and they're just playing it for you now. You enjoy it all the same. And if you've never seen it before, you enjoy it just as much as if you had seen it when they did it live. And so I think that's a really key point there. And I just think it's super, like, just mission critical for a lot of, like, SMB, small, medium-sized businesses that to consider the different ways that you can use webinars. Jeff, what are some of the biggest, so people are not giving enough value. They're not giving enough how. It sounds like they're not really, really out to help people. It sounds like they're kind of coming in and they're they're almost like, I mean, Someone might have even thought that before, like they're, they're trying to hypnotize them. We're going to dangle a carrot in your face and hit you over the head with a hammer and get you to open your wallet. Is that kind of, it sounds like that's what you're describing to me, that that's a lot of people are trying to do that. And you're saying it's more like, just really be there to help people. Like do your most altruistic and sincere presentation to help your prospect as possible. And sure, if you want, make an offer for something at the end, but to really have that in your heart. Is that, is that accurate? I mean, don't absolutely. Want- yep. Okay. And and to help people with what they want, not what you want to teach. So, you know, that's why that's why really understanding your market is is important and really sitting down and saying, Okay, so what are the top three challenges? Mm. Because those you know, those also are going to generate the highest number of attendees. And so, you know, you really want to figure out, okay, you know, what are the top three challenges of mm-hmm. this market that I want to reach? Mm-hmm. And and then craft a presentation around that. Yeah. So then, all right, so we've got someone that's got a good presentation then. Now, what about getting people to sign up? What's the best sort of traffic sources for a webinar? If someone's got that here. Should they just share it on social media? I mean, if you want to have a scalable business, what would you say? Like, again, having seen so many webinars, what are some of the best ways to get traffic or to get people to register for your webinar? Certainly the number one way for when you're talking about scaling is Facebook traffic, mm. you know, pay-per-click. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, if people want to start with just their own their own social media shares or their own blog. They certainly should do that, you know, mm-hmm. their own newsletter, their own current list, their own mm-hmm. website, put links to the webinar registration page. They certainly should do that. But when you talk about scaling and driving the most traffic possible, it would be Facebook, mm-hmm. it would be Facebook ads. Right behind that would be Google, and behind that would be LinkedIn. Mm, really, LinkedIn. I'm kind of surprised to hear that because I've done some paid ads with LinkedIn, but the cost per click, we didn't. I guess we didn't have it dialed in. So it sounds like that's like a rollout model. You would start with Facebook and then get it to work and then scale it because that's not what we did. We didn't have something that was proven yet, but we were paying like three bucks or four bucks a click or something like that with LinkedIn, and we were like, that's too expensive. We just left. But it sounds like for B2B, I guess, that's a really good source of, of traffic. Yeah, yeah, and you know, just talking to a guy. This, you know, this is very com- this is very common. But I was just talking to this particular guy that comes to my mind two days ago, I believe, and he was just talking about how he's just started. He just rolled out this brand new product. He started advertising it on Facebook, and right now they're doing four hundred. He said about four hundred and fifty, four hundred and thirty percent on their advertising on Facebook, and they really just started in the last month. So. They haven't even gotten it dialed in yet. But I mean, he was just, you know, he was, he was blown away that he could just send people straight to a webinar, make money, and obviously he's got a whole back end. But that's, you know, that's not uncommon. I mean, that's not uncommon. A lot of people think, well, you know, they think I can't invest money, but that that money to drive the to drive the registrants. But but the fact of the matter is, most people can. Most people can. And once you can do that, like like the situation he's in now, mm-hmm. he'll only get better because right. he'll determine, you know, it was more efficient advertising and whatnot. And then it's all about putting as, as much money into that machine as possible because spitting out on the same, you know, the same day is, is a lot bigger amount. Right, 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 right. So now if someone's got, they've got a webinar, they've got a traffic source, but their webinar is not converting to where it's profitable. What would you recommend to help troubleshoot that? I'd look at their, I'd look at their stats and I'd see where, pe- you know, is it not profitable because people aren't 
registering because people aren't showing up or because there's an issue with the webinar. So those are the first three things to look at. If it's not registering, you know, I'd split test the registration page. I'd, I'd look at the content that you're presenting. You know, when you're delivering a webinar, you really want to deliver the most compelling content possible. That goes back to those top three challenges. Because if you get those wrong, that's going to reduce your registration rate. In addition to that, you know, a couple of key things that, that are really mandatory on the highest converting registration page are that you have a bonus associated with people registering, and you also have a bonus for attending the webinar. So I'd also look at those things. Bonus for registering and then another bonus for showing up. Yes. Okay. Yep, and those things should be of a high perceived value as well. Like you would want to have a, an image of the bonus, and it should be something that your visitor to that registration page immediately identifies as valuable and that they want. That is huge. I mean, we could stop the call right now, and I think there's just been immense value in that. We've already described people why it's important that they figure out a way to automate their presentations. Right now, we're talking about webinars, but really, I mean, that's kind of what marketing has evolved from. I always tell people, you know, I actually have a book, Ancient Secrets of Lead Generation, How to Get Better Leads with Less Effort. And I, you know, it did hit number one on Amazon for top 100 in marketing and sales. And the basic concept was that was I described how advertising evolved and how back in the day, all business owners were just sales reps knocking door to door or going from town to town trying to sell their wares. And, you know, once upon a time, you have some really ambitious sales guy or business owner who's, you know, he's either got a baby on the way or his wife wants a vacation or a new dress or a bigger house or something. There's some pressure on him to do more, per, be like to produce more per day. Maybe he's just intrinsically motivated. And he's trying to figure out how can I knock on more doors in a day? And he realizes that every time he knocks on a new door, he goes through the same spiel. And he decides maybe if I write everything down, I can just pay a boy to run ahead of me and deliver these. And when I come along, I'll get through each door faster. And what he didn't anticipate, some of the boys are coming back with orders and money. And some boys are coming back with questions. And so he does a few iterations of the letter. And now he's got this letter, this sales letter, and he doesn't even have to go knocking on doors anymore. He can just go to a town and have the boys distribute it or, you know, thanks to Benjamin and Franklin with the postal system, just mail the letters and send it to hundreds of thousands of people. And now he's, he's able to scale his business. And that was the birth of modern advertising, roughly. I mean, that's where it comes from. And now like, we've got the similar thing. Instead of having, like you were talking about, that manual process where, I'm man, I'm really selling webinars today. <laughs> but it's true because instead of having to do that manual process of knocking on the door every day, you know, and doing that presentation, you can just do it once or twice or a bunch of times so you get it down, get a big enough group of people, record it, and then just play that recording to new people as they come through. I mean, that's huge. That's so... I mean, this is your business, so I mean, you're not, you know, this is your day to day, but I'm really excited about it because I talk about it all the time on our on interviews that that's the sales letter, the video sales letter, the teleseminar, the webinar. All they are is that sales presentation in a format that you can scale and deliver over a large volume of people. So, yeah, anyone listening to this, you need to want to listen to this call three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times with a pen and paper. Take all the notes you can because this is the real stuff. Jeff, is there like a magic room that you pull people into? Like when they pay you like a real obscene of money, you're like, all right, guys, come into this room here. I'm going to give you guys the real secrets. All right. So here's the real magic, right? Is that? Yeah. No, this is the magic room right here. This is right here? Are you sure? Okay. This is it right here. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> so we're helping people. We've, we've really know, we've really become familiar with our niche. Uh, we're really here to help people. We get them to sign up for a webinar. We're using our own organic means, just our whatever we've got, or we're sending people there with paid media, and we're putting them through our presentation. And if it's not working, we're going to troubleshoot. We're going to look at our people actually signing up. If they're not, then that's the bottleneck, right? We fix that. If they're, if they're signing up but not showing up, then that's the bottleneck. We fix that. If they're signing up, they're showing up, but they're not buying, then it's the webinar, and then we know we need to fix that. And you gave two great tips. It's the registration or showing up, then you can use a bonus for either. You can have a bonus for registering and then a bonus as well, a bribe essentially for showing up. What do you recommend if, oh, and, and also visually, sure, that was a great tip, Jeff. That was an unsolicited add-on, value add-on to that tip to make sure that you show it visually. You don't just tell them there's a bonus, but, you know, dangle, like show them what they're going to get. That's huge. What do you got for people who have pre webinar presentations that aren't converting? Okay, so if you've got a webinar presentation that's not converting, the first thing I would do is look at the stats inside your webinar system 
and see where people are dropping off. Now, in some cases, by looking at where they drop off, you can see, okay, well, everybody pretty much leaves at minute 20 or whatever. <laughs> so yeah. you can look at your presentation and see, hey, what happened within, within the last few moments of that? Um, and usually you can, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty simple to find, okay, I see what I did there. Or I see how I probably, you know, drove these people away. And so what you can do is, is just go back to your original webinar file, alter those few minutes prior, mm-hmm. and, you know, restate, reframe, re whatever, yep. that, that point in time, yep. and um, just, up, you know, and then upload, and you could split test, or you could just, you know, if it's a really super poor job the first one's doing, just replace it, yep. you know? Yep. And now if you don't see that, if you don't see them dropping off, they're staying on, then what we need to do is look at, okay, the offer. So what's your offer? Mm. What, what do you – and so focus on the offer and then look at split testing from your first one. You'll no doubt see a bigger bump in sales. The cool thing – I mean, you just – you did a brilliant job analyzing in a very dynamic and I would say exciting way with a lot of imagery what you just were talking about with the door-to-door salesman. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just such a really brilliant way to crystallize what all these tactics are in the modern day. You know, they're really, it's all the same stuff, like you say, you know, it's where everything started. Um, But one of the really cool things you can do with webinars as well is that you can split test them. You, You know, traditionally when you've got your highest converting offer, it's called a control. Going back to your example where he sends those boys ahead, you know, he could he could have sent one with the control, the highest converting offer, and then half of them with with another, an, an optional presentation. And this, you could do the same thing in webinars. So you can continually be split testing your webinars and increasing the conversion rate. So that's what I would say. Got off track there. No, but, no, that's fine. Uh, it was fine. You know, look where people are dropping off. Fix that. If once they're not dropping off. Look at your offer. Yeah. See why is it that people aren't converting? And again, when I was working with John Astrap, we actually noticed we were losing 30% of our registrants in the first 10 minutes of our webinar. And so we went back and we realized that the first 10 minutes was John, when we did it live, it was to a very large audience. It was him welcoming everyone from different parts of the world. We got so-and-so from Australia. Oh, we got so-and-so from here. But it was 10 minutes long. Yeah. And so a lot of people were showing up and they were just bailing. Like they just, you know. And so we were like, oh, maybe we should just... Like, you know, they say that too when you're writing copy or anything that, you know, once you get going, you got to clear your throat. So we just cut that off. And then we had a huge bump in sales on the back end. So and I know you went on a bit of a tangent, but I think it's really important because I don't know if people caught it. You have to read between the lines. But the one thing that we're talking about right now is until it's a, there's a really important word until to keep the traffic going, to keep hammering on this webinar until you get this resolved. If if you just like do a post on Facebook or wherever, your whatever, your Snapchat or Instagram or whatever people are using when they're listening to this call and you get 10 people and that's it, you can't establish, you can't do any improvement. You have to have steady and consistent lead flow. So I, I another thing I want to say here too is, and because this is, I've seen clients get this wrong too. You know, if, if you hired a sales rep, you wouldn't necessarily expect them to go out and crush sales their first day on the job. Not even maybe their first week, maybe not even their first month or two, but you would still probably have to pay that person a base salary just to go out and to get the experience and you would be invested in that person. And I think that that's important to think of this sort of stuff in the same manner. That, you know, if, if what, everything we're talking about, like are people registering, are people showing up, you need to be willing and able to put yourself out there and know that the first attempt you make might really suck. It might be terrible. It could be a complete train wreck, but you have to keep it out there and you have to keep telling people about it so you can get feedback and some data and stats so you can make it better. And that was something that I, you, what you just said and everything that you said, it all imply that you're going to keep going and keep hammering this until, but you didn't, you know, I just wanted to pull that out because I think there's some people that they might get frustrated and my, oh, it's, you know, all oh, webinars don't work for me or they won't work for my business or yada, yada, yada. Right. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. Thanks for, for clarifying that because yeah, absolutely. 
you know. And a lot, and sometimes, you know, especially for people in the internet marketing type world, they attend a lot of webinars. They see a lot of those things that we were talking about previously with the poor webinars that are really more just sales oriented versus value oriented, mm-hmm. and they just automatically assume that, hey, you know what? I don't like webinars. It's just a hard pitch scenario, so I'm not going to do it. But you know, those are not the those are not the best webinars. Those are not, are not the most successful webinars. And webinars are not a, you know, they're certainly not a thing that is in any way solely an internet marketing tool. I mean, our clients, we have many more clients that are not in internet marketing. You know, we have many more clients that are brick and mortars, that are attorneys, you know, elective surgeons. That's cool. Yeah, we have hospitals that are delivering you know, webinars daily, educational content webinars, like maybe how to, you know, how to deal with your, your new diabetes and things like that. Exercise, you know, we have like schools for the teach driving, you know, I mean, so you got to look and think in terms of, okay, this webinar is a vehicle. It's a way for your prospects, your clients to, to consume your content and to build that trust mm-hmm. and that rapport and yeah, there'll probably be some sort of offer at the end, but it doesn't necessarily need to have an offer. I mean, if you didn't, if, if, you, if you were simply just delivering automated webinars to your clients and didn't even have an offer at the end, every other webinar, you know, it's going to boost your business an amazing amount just because of the goodwill you're creating and the time you're spending with people, even if yep. you're not doing it live. Exactly. You know, the most successful businesses are typically the businesses that are providing the most value to people. So, yeah. you know, that's what we what we need to do, or that's what we should be doing. Which actually was kind of, is kind of the answer. I was going to ask about offers. Well, how do you how does how do you help someone make sure they've got a great offer? And you just kind of said it. You're like typically the businesses that win are the ones that are providing the most value. So I guess the way to to make sure your offer is amazing is look at what everyone else is offering and make your offer better. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the first problem with a lot of offers is that it's a very long sales pitch. It gets a little, well, first off, you know, a lot of times people on the webinar, they don't let people know there's going to be an offer made. So in other words, there's a good, friendly, wonderful experience on the webinar. Mm. And then there's that ugly transition where it goes from being, all right, so thank you all very much. I, I have something that is amazing for you now. Yeah, I think I think you you know, and the and the presenter is feeling so guilty and ucky <laughs> icky because they hadn't told. So you know, the best presentation, the best transition is always going to be the one that's not a surprise to your to your attendees. So that starts by telling people, listen, I, you're going to love this content. It's going to you know deliver immense value to you. At the end, I'm going to make an offer. Mm-hmm. You know, it might be right for some of you. So let's get started. Yep. So it's not a surprise. So when you go for that transition, you can say, as I promised, I'm going to make you an offer. And now you're not becoming like the slimy salesman. You are, you know, delivering on a promise you made. And everybody likes people that deliver on promises. So how to improve that? That right there a big, improvement big improvement because then everything changes with the presenter and he can present or she can present in a more powerful, natural way. Mm. Secondly, a lot of times people will deliver a long sales presentation but won't allow people to purchase until the very end. Uh. Now, there's a lot of people, you know, in copy, copy being text, sales content, you typically are writing for two paths. One would be for the people that want all the details. The other one would be for the people that don't need the details and just want to purchase. And so you should present your webinar the exact same way. And that is by when you start your, your pitch, doing a quick overview of what you get in just a matter of a couple minutes and then making the offer, which would be putting the link to where they can buy it. Because you're already going to have a bunch of people that want to make the purchase. So just let them go. Because if you continue to prattle on for 10 or 12 minutes, they might get tired of waiting. So present the offer in a short period of time and then get into the details of your offer. You know, what each module or what each class or what each aspect of this service or this software or this. You know, we also have a customer that sells rockets from Texas. Now I've never, I've never, 
watch their 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 presentation, but I just think it's super cool that somebody's selling rockets, rockets right? With you know, webinar. so so I guess they'd be saying, okay, this is what this booster does, or this is what this. Right. Type of, you know, like, I will. Yeah, we might not understand what they're talking about because it might be rocket scientists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Charts and graphs and diagrams and discussions exactly. about Elon. Elon Musk, total side comment. He's three D printing some of a lot of his stuff he uses in SpaceX, which I think is just insane. Anyways, yeah, right. So okay. So uh, Jeff, I mean, you're giving so much value on this. So. Right. So quick overview. So the big, another place people mess up is not kind of sneaking the offer in on people like they're guilty of it. Suppose you're like, just be really upfront. Like, look, I'm here to help you. I'm going to give you everything I can. At the end, I'm going to make you an offer. And like, that was a great tip. You know, just quick overview. Here's what you get if you're interested to buy now. And then you go into the details. I love that. I really, really love that. What about the people that are listening to this that aren't sure what to do or say on the webinar? Like they're like, all right, I, got, I can make an offer. Do you have any tips for that like is there like a, a formula or do you just kind of get on and you start with your intro and then you get into some educational content I guess and I don't know what, what would you recommend as an outline as a basic basic outline for someone as a basic outline the first thing you should do if possible which if you do an automated webinar it is possible is start the webinar with your face on it so in other words just you can literally just be you know you could be recorded by a, your computer Cam. So start the, the webinar with your face on it, uh, welcome the people, and then make a comment about a flaw that people can con confirm, a flaw uh, characteristic that you might have. And so for me, that could be like, oh, geez, I just looked and I noticed that I need to lose some weight. Uh, oh, well, I, <laughs> I'm not going to do that on this webinar. Let's get started. Right. Or look, I, I just noticed that, you know, I really should have done something about my teeth. Or, you know, I just noticed I should have uh, gotten a haircut, things like that. And so make it something that's of a physical nature so that people can themselves verify it. So, you know, you wouldn't say, oh, geez, you know, I've got a headache today. You wouldn't say that. I mean, it needs to be something they can verify. So that happens relatively quickly. And that happens in a matter of just a couple minutes. Right. You welcome them. You kind of apologize for whatever that is. And then you roll into the presentation, which should be slides. And what you should do is tell them what they're going to get. Tell them, you know, those three compelling topics. And then tell them the bonus. Mm. Then tell them why you're the person to teach them. You know, that can be done in three minutes to five minutes. It doesn't need to be half the webinar. And in fact, it'll be much more powerful and much, much more high converting if it's not half the webinar. <laughs> Roll into um, your first content piece. The reason I'm struggling right here is because I don't know if I want to get into this, but I'm going to get into it anyhow. You're going to roll into your first content piece. Prior to you covering your first content piece, what you're going to tell them is why this is valuable. You know, and, and, and the reason you'll want to learn this and the reason, the reason I'm teaching it to you today is because, you know, in order to have a successful business, it, you know, it has to be scalable. You can't be limited. You know, you can't be relying purely on your own efforts. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that you can make larger if you want to make it more successful. And, you know, in order to provide security for yourself and your family and your employees, you're, of course, going to want to scale it because that's what business is all about. And the third and final reason this is particularly important is because it will allow you to help more individuals, more mm. organizations, whatever it is. And the more people you help, obviously, the more rewarding, the more personally gratifying it is. So here is how you do this. And then roll into that. Now, those three things that I just mentioned, they, you know, they're not magical. They were just things that in my head I was saying as if they made sense to this particular content piece. Right. Obviously, your, your content as well as your market will dictate why it's important. So now that you've framed it for them and they get why, okay, this is important, you're going to roll into that first content piece. And then what you're going to do is after you deliver that, and that has to be real content. It can't be like, the content piece can't be something like. Common uh, knowledge or. Something yeah, else. common it's knowledge. Gotta, or it's got to be val like, yeah, it's got to be something I probably would have been willing to pay for to get on its own. Exactly. Okay. Then what you do is you roll into reiterating why it was important. And so there might be a slight overlap with the first three items. 
but it'll be presented in a different way, so it'll come across to different different people in different ways. So yeah, now that you know how to do this, this is cool because now you know you've got a way that you can, and then go into those three points. I didn't mention it earlier, but at the top of the webinar, I would also tell people send in your questions, comments, suggestions, complaints, and I'll get to those during the Q and A segment. I would reiterate that at this point, and then roll into the second. And so it would be delivered in the exact same way. Then I would roll into the third, delivered in the exact same way. And so as people are learning this content, they're hearing very valuable stuff, but they're also understanding why yeah. you're, you're delivering this. Yeah. And then after you deliver it, you're telling them, you know, another, you're expressing in another way the value of that content. So they really, you know, it's a very emotional, impactful way to present. Mm, that's a big reason why is because you're, you're getting them to visualize the results that it will give them when they've done that. You're getting them emotionally gauged and it's supposed to being very intellectual, A, B, C, D, E. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So as good as that content will be that you'll deliver, it will be, you know, a hundred times more. Yeah. <laughs> it, they will recognize it a hundred times more than they would have had we not framed it that way. Right. Well, the emotion um, helps with retention. For sure. Because now that they're, you know, they're excited, they're, they're imagining this stuff and they're, they're understanding the benefits in a way that, that is, you know, extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, after the third piece is delivered, roll into the Q&A segment. Mm -hmm. um, anybody that's been working in their market for any length of time will know typically what the common questions are. You know, what, what the same questions are they hear again and again and again. So... Mm -hmm. They'll record that. They won't say something like, oh, here's John from London. But what they would say is, oh, here's a, here's a pretty interesting question. This person is wondering, you know, what calculation do they need, ideally, in order to run a dog walking business? Mm. So what I haven't done is I haven't, like, read that question verbatim. Right. I've yeah. just kind of rephrased it. Because if that's a common question, during every single automated webinar that runs, there's going to be... Yeah. People asking that. So now that person has got the sense that you just answered their, their question. And so at that point in time, close the webinar and say, hey, listen, you know, I've tried my best. I think I've given you a lot of good value. I thank you very much. If you've got everything you need, you know, you're free to go. However, as I did promise, I'm going to make an offer. It's a special offer just for people on this webinar now. And that's what I'm going to do now. And then roll right into the offer make that offer and then in the final final 60 seconds of the webinar is when you say oh i almost forgot yes here's the bonus i'm going to put this link up here now and you know thanks again for attending uh, talk for another you know 45 seconds letting people know they can download the bonus and then in the webinar by thanking them and complimenting them for being serious enough in themselves, mm -hmm. their business, their customers, their family, their loved ones, their future to attend. That's awesome. So I went into more detail than I typically would have. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But you know, we've already gone into a lot of detail here. So I thought, well, you know, because those, some of those concepts, you know, they're a little grindy to, to teach on a real short podcast, but they're so powerful, you know, so and they'll powerful. increase your conversion so much. Yeah. No, like for people that have listened to this, like Jeff just gave you like a multi-million dollar formula. I'm just going to do this right now. You need to go to StealthSeminar.com and I'm, there's no affiliate link. That's his, your, there's nothing. I'm get. I got zero. All you, all I get out of this is the satisfaction that knowing you, my listener have the benefit of getting quality information from Jeff, who I've known for uh, three, four years now. I've helped clients make millions of dollars. Like, this is real. This is the magic room. You're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. You're welcome. Just go and just get started. If you're not already started, get started. If you're already up and running or you, you did it and you dropped off, i am already got like four webinars in my head. Like, I'm like, I need to go back right after this and read, like, you know, <laughs> like, there's just, there's no reason to not, to not do it. There's no reason to not go and just try, like, just, just try. Cause the, the upside can be phenomenal, like phenomenal, you know, cause there's a thing like here. Here's, here's the real power. A lot of people don't even get this. Like any business, you know, anyone who has a car could be a cab driver. But why do people drive for Uber or for tax company, cab companies? Because that's where people call or the app people log into when they're willing to pay money to be driven somewhere. 
And that's such a powerful thing. So if you can own the presentation that gets the orders for something to be done, you don't even necessarily need to fulfill what's being done. You just need to manage the quality or manage the manager who maintains the quality of what's being delivered to make sure people are getting their problem solved. And then your safety is the fact that you've got the phone that rings with customers wanting to spend money. You know, like that's just such a powerful position. That's like a toll booth position to be in your business. When you own the road, people want to drive on. Like that's, you know, it's like you're the guy with the truck that shows up and picks four guys to get some work that day. You know, like it's just such a powerful position to be in. And and again, so Jeff like literally just gave the blueprint. I mean, there's almost nothing. I mean, the only thing we haven't covered is email follow-up, but the, the answer is email follow-up, like email follow-up, like follow up with your prospects forever, you know, until they ask you to not, although don't send a meaningless email, you know, don't just imagine if someone's trying to talk to you on a city bus, you know, or you're just sitting at the food court or something with your girlfriend or your wife or your brother, or your best friend, whoever, and someone's like interrupting, they don't have anything important to say. That's a really important way to look at your, your email follow-up and marketing. So make sure you got something important and meaningful to say. Otherwise, don't mail it, but do it and do it for as long as you can. And you've literally just been given a multi-million dollar blueprint on using webinars to grow your business. Um, that's so awesome. Jeff, that was – that's just – so – you set up your webinar. What is it? All right, hold on. I got all my notes. But basically, you, again, you have to really, and I think I think really where a lot of people listening to this, if any of them fail, Jeff, I think maybe you might even agree, if they fail with this miserably, the, part, the most important critical piece would probably be understanding their market really well. And I don't know, you've done so many more and seen so many more than I have, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Nope, you're absolutely correct. They, they, and, and giving them what it is, you know, that can be the most valuable. Mm, what do you what do you mean by I guess yeah solving the, one of the problems like for free just here you go come on the webinar let me help solve this for you right yeah and do it in in the power of three so you wouldn't like you know sometimes people try to solve too big of problems like you know if I was in personal development I wouldn't bring them on a webinar to improve their wealth improve their health and improve their relationships. I mean, that's too big. That could be three different webinars. So yeah, you want to have very, very valuable advice. So I could tackle each of those in its own webinar. You want to make it size webinar. The power of threes is always, so I wouldn't teach them just one thing. I'd, I'd teach them three, you know, because throughout, since the beginning of, of mankind, really, you know, things have been in threes. And so I believe and I've seen from conversions that the power of threes will convert better than, say, like teaching them one thing or two things or 12 things. You know, when you look at stories, when you look at movies, when you look at plays, when you look at TV shows, it's always done in the power of threes. So they're not going to sit there and say to themselves, hey, this is like Macbeth or whatever. But if it's worked that long and worked that well and been in in use that long, obviously humans are hardwired to experience power three. So by presenting it that way, that will, you know, benefit everybody. Mm, mm, very well said. So well said. Jeff, is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Well, you know, you, at the very end there, we talked about webinar follow-up. So I would probably say, briefly say that, you know, for most people, replays will hurt your response. They won't help. Because now, keeping in mind that what we're doing is we're building a business. We're not, you know, just creating a webinar. So if people that offer webinars and then offer replays, typically then will hurt themselves because it'll really kill their future show up rate with those individuals. So you're training people not to show up. As soon as you're training people not to show up, then you lose, you know, some of the most powerful aspects of a webinar, which is that it's event based. So if it's event based, you know, people have to show up at this particular time at this particular day. Mm. They don't have a choice. And everybody's busy. Mm-hmm. And everybody has maybe great intentions of showing up and watching a video or reading a sales letter or watching a replay. But oftentimes, you know, that doesn't get done. For most people, you're far better off. You'll be far more profitable if you don't offer a replay. It doesn't mean, you, you know, you couldn't still have emails for those attendees. But for those people that didn't attend, you'd be far better off to, to invite them back in a week to another webinar you're delivering because the last one was successful. Mm, that's a huge tip. I'd say the only other thing maybe that you could have asked about 
and I don't know if it's appropriate or not. I'm almost sure it's appropriate. <laughs> but that is, you know, when Still Seminar started, there was no other automated webinar around. And now there are a few others. There's been a lot that have come and gone. One question might be, well, I'm with this other organization, this other automated webinar service, or I'm thinking about using this other automated webinar service. Why would I ever use Still Seminar? And, you know, the reason you would use Still Seminar is because it's the longest running, it's the most mature. And, you know, when we got into this business, it wasn't to catch a fad. It wasn't to catch a wave. It wasn't, you know, it's because it was for my own, you know, it was initially for my own business. And there's a lot of big differences between our software and other people's software. Other people's software, they do a wonderful job selling it and they have fancy sales videos and they make really gorgeous looking things. Our system, not so much, but but there's no absolute comparison whatsoever as far as the conversion rates, as far as the ROI. Yeah. And I'll just, I don't want to turn this into a sales pitch, so I'll only mention one thing. There's no other service offered that allows you to run an automated webinar on like an iPhone, an iPad, Android. But, let, but let's focus on Apple because you probably know Apple Consumers are absolutely the most profitable. I mean, it's not even close. It's like 360% higher, according to the data. Yeah, according to the most recent data, the iOS user was 360% more valuable than an Android. And so when you're looking at webinars on those other devices, they show the video length and you're able to fast forward and rewind. <laughs> you know, for most people, it's obviously a huge difference because so many people when we started still seminar there was almost no mobile traffic mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's just like exploded yeah. in a way, you know yeah. so that was now a couple of years ago but you know that was something that we put a lot of emphasis on mm -hmm. and we're very proud of and has made a big difference to people so mm -hmm. you know there's other options i'd encourage you to explore all of them just make sure you're getting all the facts and if you have people that are using mobile devices you know, Stealth Seminar is the only one that's going to work right on it. Right, right, right. And to to your credit, and honestly, again, I just just to be very transparent and candid, you know, before I met you, Jeff, you know, I had been using a different one. It was like a one pay and done when I was working with John. And the reason why we switched to you, I guess they'd used you before, but then they, they heard of this other one that came out. And again, like you mentioned, there's lots of other options out there. But this one in particular, we switched to because it was like you pay for it once, then you own it forever. And we did one webinar and it was really successful and then we did a replay and then we had technical errors and it ended up costing us almost eighty thousand dollars and that's why we came back to stealth because it just wasn't worth it because we'd only paid them once they didn't have a support tech team they didn't have anyone they i mean there was the programmer that built it but the dude was on vacation and he's like i'm you know i'm i'm off the grid i'm not getting on a phone call like he literally said that i've never wanted blood from someone and I was furious because we had just had one webinar. We had the webinar, worked great. And of course, maybe this was an isolated in it, who knows, but this is my honest to gosh, honest to God experience. We had a great webinar, we had an automated, we automated it, it worked great. Then the third weekend, the buy button, for whatever reason, decided not to show. The settings were set, everything was set up, no button popped up, nothing. Everyone came on, no sales that happened other than the sales reps calling people afterwards to follow up. So then we started trying to contact the support, trying to get like, hey, like, we're kind of concerned here. We got, we're spending money to get more people to sign up for this fourth event. And last weekend, you know, we got some issues like someone help us and they didn't help us again. And we ju judging based on our conversion rates, because we didn't necessarily mention this, but you know, it's predictable revenue. Like with John, at least we could predict very accurately within a hundred dollars, how much money we were. And we, we scaled this to where we were doing 70 to a hundred thousand dollars a week, you know, because we knew blank at the very, very beginning, we were spending $3 and 50 cents to get a registrant and we were grossing $27 per person who showed up. Now we had a six hour webinar. It was like a telethon event and we had a proven product and John's a great sales rep. He's really he knows his market. He really had, you know, he's, he's good at what he does. And then, you know, it kind of started to flatline a little bit. And I think at the worst, before I moved on, we were paying 
$14, $15 a lead, but we were still grossing 24. It was an info product, so it was almost all margin minus the marketing costs. So, I mean, we did really well. And when we, so being able to predict what we were going to make, because every week it was, we have this many units and between this percent and that percent would buy, you know, and so you can project, we would just know week after week, it cost us, like I said, 60 to $80,000. And that's what brought us back to stealth was the fact that, you know, not only did you guys, you guys have Monday to Friday, you know, nine to five support, but you guys actually got involved, rolled up your sleeves. You actually even made adjustments to the software. I know we had an issue where there was like a pop-up the webinar was coming in a pop-up and we didn't like that and want that and you guys no problem and you came back in two days and fixed it and then suddenly it was embedded in the page forever and that was what we wanted like there's just it was just it was just a world of difference for us and that you know there's a saying if you you know if you treat your business like a hobby it'll pay you like a hobby if you treat your business like a business it'll pay you like a business and we kind of were like kind of hobbying about it and then we had technical glitches and you know we were trying to scale big and we really needed you know what we didn't need an enterprise level solution we just needed like a tech person to make sure our technology worked and that was really the, the deal breaker for us and that's you know that ability has been why i've stayed loyal with stealth ever since so i know it's a huge endorsement and you know but from people listening depending on the situation you're in you know like like jeff like jeff said take a look at whatever's available i'm a big fan of stealth and there's lots of good options out there but if you are starting to scale big and you know for us that was a real that, I mean, no one else is offering that. They're all trying to, they're all dealing, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to talk about them, but that was the biggest thing, the support, the handholding, the, the, the fact that we could rely on people, that there was timely response. I mean, it just, it just made a world of difference. And like I said, you know, we didn't lose 60 to $80,000 because of it. And we would, you know, and we scaled up and I don't know how big they got after I left, after being with them for a year and a half. But when I, when I was there, we had a solid six, eight weeks of doing a hundred thousand a week. And that was just because it's all the traffic we could buy off Facebook. Yeah. So Jeff, thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so, so much. If anyone wants to reach out with you, contact you, we already mentioned stealthseminar.com. Is there any other way for them to get in touch? Sure, they could get in touch. They could just look up Stealth Seminar or Jeff Ronin on Facebook, and that'd be a terrific way. Or, you know, the contact form on Stealth Seminar or the phone number on Stealth Seminar. And, yeah, we're always reachable here. Awesome. Well, Jeff, again, thank you so much for your time. I know you could be doing something else. So, again, and from for the listeners here, thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, as we said before, there is no magic room. You guys literally got the goods, like, on this on this episode. And, you know, but here's the thing is, it's implementation. It's all about implementation. So it's great to have great ideas in your head, but you actually need to get out and take action and make it happen. So please do that. And just, Jeff, again, once you thank you so much. Appreciate you. Well, thank you. A real pleasure to talk to you always, Daryl. So thank you so much for inviting me. You've reached the end of our interview. Now, first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give to them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.